hockey. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. Friday edition of Judd's Hockey Show. Wild coming off a 3-1 win over the San Jose Sharks. Oh, are they awful. At the bottom of the entire league with 40 points. What a collection. Wild uh, with that win. Now 79 points. St. Louis won again. They're in the first spot out of the playoffs with 82 points. Uh, Vegas won against the Jets in Winnipeg, so they actually jumped the Kings, who are now at 87 points. So, long story short, the Wild is um, still eight points out of a playoff spot, as they have what now, A.J. Fredrickson, 10 games left, including tomorrow against the Golden Knights, the first of two against the Golden Knights before the season comes to an end. Um, I think we all basically know where, where this is going unless, yeah. well, I mean, the problem is the teams in front of you would have to fall apart completely. So, so it's not as much what you control at this point as what they control. And I don't know that with the way that uh, teams are playing ahead of the wild, that they're going to get any breaks at this point. Um, all right, quickly on last night's game age, uh, Felino, Marcus Felino, I think this came out about, I don't know early in the week or so that he was, he was not going to, or it might've come out last week that he was not going to practice uh, undisclosed issue, but that he would play in games. He did not play last night. The injury bug, um, certainly a talking point here has been absolutely incredible. Uh, but all of that being said, you know, first of all, the sharks are hard to watch. <laughs> Yeah. That was a hard game to watch, and it's not the Wilds' fault. Now, now the fact that the score was tied into, what, the third period was a little bit surprising, but that's the first thing. The second thing is the game against Vegas tomorrow, which I, I think we, we should probably talk about primarily. What's your, what's your expectation there? What's the Because here's what surprised me a little bit about last night's game. I was a little bit surprised, and the Wild outshot him 16 to one in the first period. I was a little bit surprised though, that the wild didn't get a little uh, greasier and grimier with trying to get goals. Um, it felt like shots were coming from the outside Mackenzie Blackwood, I believe was in goal for the sharks. Um, but tomorrow I think we are going to see at least to a certain degree, we're going to see who is completely checked out and maybe who is not. And that's the one thing that's left for me to sort of see is like the wild talks about we're doing the right things. We're trying to do the right things. I don't always see that. I think tomorrow provides a really good um, um, example potentially of who is actually trying to do the right things on the ice consistently. Yeah. And that last night, I mean, say what you want about it's a win. It's a bad team. Like you said, it's tough to awful. I mean, they did. They basically didn't play the first period and you could argue that, once they did start playing, maybe the Sharks looked like the and better team. And how was it team, not five, four rip at the end of one? That's that's the biggest thing. I don't know why this team has had, I and I feel like it's been a season-long epidemic for them. They yeah. get these chances, and they, they pepper a goalie with shots. And Mackenzie Blackwood, I mean, maybe like in his early days with New Jersey when he was uh, before like his injury-riddled time, yeah. Was a solid goaltender, not like elite but or like very good even by any means, but you know, a a, a decent enough goaltender. Yep. He's now on the Sharks, who really have nobody in front of him. Well, he's he, having a terrible year. That's why the Devils on you know. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, the fact that you were only up one, what the one zero after one is, it just shows how much this team does not finish good opportunities. Yep. The, the, it's it's a game where. Sure, it's it's slim chances for you to get in the into the playoffs still. But everyone, I think, and their mother is expecting you to win last night, and you're supposed to do it more than likely in a pretty convincing fashion. I mean, the yes. Sharks they do not want to win hockey games right now. I I saw a graphic who, of like their last would? fifteen or celebrating time <laughs> out of their last like fifteen or so. They have one win, a couple overtime losses otherwise it's just been loss 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 and I, frankly i don't blame them i'm sure their front office loves it i'm sure their fan base is kind of just begging for this season to be over at a point so they can get to the draft and look ahead mm -hmm. but um you, you you need a full 200 foot empty netter to really put the dagger into the <laughs> lowly sharks what yep. what 
it, it feels like it's been a season long thing, which is just genuinely frustrating for me. Um, because if you look at their like heat chart last night, and you're right, the shots they had some low, uh, the amount of like shots taken were uh, low percentage opportunities, I would say. But they're like legit scoring chances. They had some right in like the danger area, that kind of home plate as it's described. Where did they? Okay, they're on top of the crease. It's just yeah. Who who was it? Ryan Ryan Hartman had a. Well, chance. he shot it right in. He shot it right into Blackwood for first period. That goal that that they said they they reviewed to see yeah. that if the play was completed because the puck did go in and they eventually said no. Hartman literally had the puck right in front and he shot it into Blackwood who was turned sideways. He was out of position. Yeah. yeah, this that's what I'm talking about. Like like how are you not? How did you not put up four goals there? But I mean it's. It's sort of past the point of return here. Like yeah, I, I care, no, but I don't care. But I do think that the I do think the Golden Knights game is going to be instructive because mm -hmm. you know that's going to tell you okay. And and there are some guys I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt are not checked out. Like Erickson Eck brings it every night. Yes. But but I do think that 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 game is going to give you a pretty good idea of who's cashed things in and who has not. Yeah, you're exactly right. I, in looking at uh, my one of my favorite sites, Money Puck, they're describing tomorrow's game against Vegas as a literal must-win game for the Wild. If they beat the Knights in regulation, they gain a 4.6% chance of making the playoffs, up to a whopping Judd 9.8% chance of Woo! making the Stanley Cup playoffs. You if they lose to the Knights in regulation, though, they drop down to only a 1.4% chance. So it's, uh, I, I mean... If you think it, that door couldn't shut anymore before finally being oh, fully it, it, closed, it yeah, certainly you know, can. You know what it is? It, it gets a big, fat, eliminated by it. It gets an E. <laughs> e is the final step. Um, yeah, but th this is where we're we're seeing who wants to be a part of this team, who right, who wants to be a part of this franchise, who wants to be a part of the culture, and I, you know, that seems to be the recurring term, the recurring word that comes back to in my mind, what's associated with Bill Guerin and his tenure so far as the GM of the Minnesota Wild, which is culture. And I think for the most part, he's done a pretty solid job of that. If if it isn't, you know, if, even with dead salary cap, with, um, you know, a lot of injuries at times, with trading guys and bringing new guys in, culture has been kind of the, the magnet of where things gravitate back towards to. And I feel like He's we we've reached a spot where I'm questioning a handful of guys whether or not they fit that culture. And the issue okay. is that in that handful, you have guys that have that no trade clause. Yep. Um, so even if they don't fit that anymore, you're kind of handcuffed as to what you can actually do with them. And so, you know, moving forward here, that it, it comes down to you need to have your behind the scenes, closed door, one on ones that we heard about with. Um, like a guy like Marcus Johansson, where it's, hey, we know you have it, but you need to show it over these final 10 games. Because, you know, frankly, it's a little too late in my book to now start caring. I'm done with him. Uh, I am too. I I'm, am too. I'm done with him. I'm done with him. But, but, you know, there's other guys like Matt Zuccarello too. I think Matt Zuccarello is, I think he, I will give him credit because I think he's adjusted to not being on the top line paired with Kaprizov at the hip. I yep. think he's adjusted decently enough off of that to now his new role within the wild. And he's still putting up production. He's still doing some other stuff, but there's other times where he just takes very crucial in my mind shifts off. And this goes back to, I want to say two games ago where we talked about, he does the Ole in the middle of this uh, defense optional. Exactly. You know, it offense fine. It's fun. Hey, I understand it, but this is not bantams. This is not peewees where, you know, uh, Tyler, the, the 12 year old is thinking like, I only want to score goals and that's it. You're playing the NHL. You you have to be able to have a little bit more than just one aspect to your game, Matt Zuccarello. So right. that's where I want to see you busting your butt to get back into the de defensive zone and use that yeah. extra long stick I keep hearing about to break up some plays. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree. The other thing I'm guessing tomorrow, now now they played Thursday night. They've got a day off, but I'm guessing Flurry plays tomorrow. Because Gus played against the Sharks, which also is sort of an indictment of the Gus bus when you're like, yeah, let's just play you against the Sharks. <laughs> um, but to me, that also that also speaks to where they're at mentally and goal here. And it's not a surprise, but it is a surprise compared to what we expected at the start of the season. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and and this is why I think you you're best off trying to move Gus because if you're going to start Flurry in the game tomorrow, you are essentially saying a guy who is you know going to be 40 next November is our is our hope now. Um, and so I I think that that draws a conclusion about your feeling about Gustafson. Now you might think, okay, give him the summer, give him a time to sort of get his mind right. I get all that, but as we've discussed also, uh, Volstead's going to come up and you're going to want to play him as well. And I don't think he's going to spend a third year in the American Hockey League. Um, and so, what's, what's, where's the, like, what's the point of putting in the effort of rebuilding a house of cards if yeah. one gust of wind is able to just knock it all back down? Right. In, in right. Gustafson's like mentality. So, well, and was 2022 uh, 23 a fluke or was 23 yeah. 24 a fluke? And if you've got the goaltender, a first round draft pick, if you've got the guy that you are certain is going to be the guy, you know, next year's the year, right? Give him the chance. Mm -hmm. And if he washes out and he's not good, you got a problem, but that's a, but, but you can't assume that problem. And if Flurry wants to come back, that's, that's great. Um, So in goal, if Flurry plays to me, we're getting closer and closer to, because my whole thing has been just play guys, see see what you got. John Hines' whole thing is, well, but Money Puck says we still got a 4.9 chance to make the playoffs, so I'm not going <laughs> to do that. One thing I did like last night was Hustadinov killing penalties. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. One is he's not the strongest guy, but I think he's got I think he's got Rossi potential, and that is to use the spring and summer to get himself stronger, and. He also, what I like is the dude can win faceoffs. Like he's clearly shown it. And before we say, well, yeah, okay, that that's great. I mean, you think about how many centers has this team had through the years who you are confident that they are an ace faceoff guy. It's not a long list. So, so I like Hustadinov being rolled in on PK because I think it shows. I think it shows that they are taking this opportunity seriously, and that is as you know, all I've asked for for like the last three weeks is take a look at guys in situations that challenge them because I would prefer to do that than playing veterans in some type of misguided attempt to try to win games that you're probably not going to win enough of to make the postseason. And on Husna Dinov, it's, I don't, have you, have you seen the, like the, the national geographic or like the nature channel or whatever, breakdown of how an octopus can squeeze through like the tiniest little hole because they, you know, they, the way that they contort their body and stuff like no, that. Husna, yeah, yeah, believe it or not, look it up. Uh, Husna Didov, and I mean this as a compliment, kind of does the same thing because you you don't think he's going to be able to get to a certain area. You, you don't think he's going to go to a certain area, but just like an octopus, he makes it work. He makes it work. He goes to the dirty area. And like you said, he doesn't have the size maybe, but he he's playing like he does. He's playing a more mature mental game than maybe his body um, allows physically. So like yeah, you're saying with these with penalty this. kills, he puts himself in the right spot. And this is something we saw in his NHL debut. Yep. He's not afraid to be the octopus and slither his way, sneak his way and squeeze his way into the corner going after a puck because he knows, Hey, I have to hustle here because if I lose this battle in the corner, that's going to result in a good chance for the opposition to set up in the offensive zone or something along those lines. So, uh, yep. Usandinov is Russian for octopus. I, I like that. And he he was, if I am uh, correct, in the, the game against the Blues in which he was basically benched in the third period. I think he was a minus three, and he didn't have, have a great game in his own zone. But he's yeah. a guy that I want to give chances to to prove that wrong. And there are times, to what you're saying as well, AJ, when you can tell he's played pro. Like, like you could tell he's played with men before. And yes. it's not just a kid like from college or junior. So... Um, the last thing on, on the game last night, and it just goes back to, to the Sharks is how surprised are you that Luke Cunning has become a journeyman? Nothing. I thought Luke Cunning, who, who, by the way, just to go through this plus minus on the Sharks, just for laughs, Granlund, who has two goals in his past two games back here. I think the Sharks were here on like March 4th as well is a minus 19. That's not good. Luke Cunning is a minus 29. Nico Sturm is a minus 20. Kalen Addison is among the worst in the league at minus 31. So the former wild centers and defensemen, not going great. But you know what? Luke Cunning, when he came 
from Wisconsin, drafted by the Wild, was a guy who I thought captain material, like they talked about him, captain material. I believe he had played really well in a World Juniors at that point in time for Team USA. Mm-hmm. I watched, I've watched him the past two games now that, that the Sharks have, have played here, and I think he has eight goals. I, man, was I wrong. I thought he was going to be a really nice player. And, you know, between them, Fenton especially, Fenton and Billy made some trades that I think fans didn't love. And some of them turned out to be bad. Some t- turned out to be fine. But the point is, at the end of the day, man, they picked up on Cunning quickly and, and traded him, which... I didn't hate at the time, but I thought it might be a mistake unless he's just been brought down completely. But I mean, he started to bounce around. He's essentially washing out. Yeah. And that world juniors you're talking about was that 16, 17. He had, he was actually the captain of team yeah. USA there. He had four points in seven games, but just looking at his time since, since making the jump from college to pros and, and especially the NHL game, First season with the Wild, 19 games, minus three. 2018, 19, 49 games with the Wild, minus nine. 2019, tw- uh, 2019, 20, 63 games with the Wild, minus 10. 2021, he only played 38 games because that was, I want to say the sh- that was the shortened COVID year. He was a plus three, a plus three in 38 games. 21, 22, minus 11 with Nashville over a full 82 game season. Uh, 22, 23 San Jose Sharks minus nine over 31 games so far this season. Like you said, minus 29. He's wearing an A for the Sharks. He's had the A on his chest at times this season for the Sharks. He's got 14 points. He's got eight goals. What happened? I don't understand it because I don't feel like you go from wearing the C for Team USA in the World Juniors, the biggest like non-professional stage of hockey in the world, to like you said, just kind of a a nothing journeyman. Like like is he too slow? Is he like, I he because he has the size, and I always thought that he had like a leader mentality. That's what like that's what I thought yeah. was told. And is it just the skills just not there, and maybe just never translated? Because so, you see that on. sometimes where some guys, and he was at Wisconsin, you you they can dominate, and they look fantastic, they're flashy in the college game, but once they go up against grown men on a consistent basis, yeah. it's just they never take that next step. I. And it's frustrating because he's a guy I feel like is pretty easy to root for. But now, like you said, you know, you're you're, you're minus 29. I'm just surprised. 14 points with the Sharks. It, it's, it is surprising. So as as you read before, in 2019-20, he scored 15 goals in his last year in 63 games here. And I thought he was a 15 to 20 goal guy. Mm-hmm. And since then, he has scored, his high was in 21-22 in his second year with the Predators. 13 goals and that was in 82 games yeah so yeah i'm just i thought i thought he was gonna be a really solid guy for it a long time and i guess i i was wrong okay last thing before we go i want to ask you i don't know if you watched it last night or not gophers omaha game nebraska omaha against the gophers regional hockey in sioux falls where would that loss have ranked you former St. Cloud State guy on the Matsko playoff meter if they hadn't won that game. Because you saw, like, this was Bob's rap coming from St. Cloud State. And um, unfortunately, in the championship game last year, they blew it with a team that was an all time great team. This Gopher team, not as good. But if they had lost in the opening round of the NC 2A tournament, where would that have ranked? in your personal opinion of Motsko playoff losses? Who I, cause you saw some bad ones, dude. I've seen, I've seen some bad ones. You've seen, cause you saw some good St. Cloud state teams, probably better than this current golfer team that lost. I, yes, I think so. I, let's see my, my first year at St. Cloud was the, at the X, they lost to Ferris state, but I believe that was, to go to like the 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 frozen four, so I'm not sure. going to you know, but it's still it's fair state in overtime. Well, yeah, you got no, Char- Charlie Lindgren in goal. You got Joey Bennett. Like it's it, there. I mean, you got to be a decent team to get there to begin with. Yeah, but I mean, I was there. I mean, let let's see here. I I'll I'll say this, probably not as high as some people and gold Golden Gopher fans may be reacting to right now because 
Minnesota, they don't play in the NCHC. And I am a firm believer that despite whatever you want to say about Hockey East, the NCHC, in my mind, they, there's some discrepancy at the bottom, but they have some of the top teams in the nation every single year. It's And it, it fluctuates. Like North Dakota, they're a great team. St. Cloud, they miss out on the tournament, but they usually have a pretty solid team as well. A yep. bit of a fall off. Denver? This Denver, powerhouse. Denver. Yep. I mean, look at what they did this this weekend. Um, Nebraska Omaha, despite being like a Nebraska Omaha name, is a solid, hardworking. They pl- like they play gritty hockey. They they're like they're a well constructed team, and they just kind of get it. Um, so the fact that they were leading until what the final minute against Minnesota, or like they they didn't surrender a lead, I should say, um, until late. They were the they, sorry, they weren't trailing until the final minute. That was tied. Yep. How I need to word that. Yep. Um, I think speaks as to how good they are because I do think this Minnesota team maybe is slightly down from what we saw last season. Oh, no like, question. This is not yeah, that team. Yeah, it's not. But when it comes to what Omaha is, like if they would have lost yesterday, it would have, st- I think, st- stuck with uh, Gophers fans. But this is not on like the Mount Rushmore, I think, of Mott's. Okay, would've that's what I, Mott that's what I was going to ask. Would, it w- would this honorable have been mention, on... Honorable mention for sure, but not okay. on the Mount Rushmore of Mott's goal losses because Omaha, I think, is a team that I think they're going to give Boston – a, a run for their, uh, they would have given Boston a run for their money, is what okay. I would say. Yeah, had they won that game, so they played a heavy game. Yes, in that. Yeah, I'm just trying to you, you, you know the litany of defeats far more than I do, and so so because I look, I, I mean, I'm not sure that the NCAA championship game last year can be topped. No, now per, perhaps th- there's a St. Cloud one that you've got that you think was more painful, but you know, number one, your that was an all time team. That that's one of the best. Go for teams of all time. Like that was a phenomenal team. Second of all, you went into a shell to try to protect a lead when, when you should have kept pressing. And third of all, if I am not mistaken, in the overtime, you didn't have your top line. And I don't know that you had Brock Faber out there and you gave up a goal. So like that, that to me is, is the George Washington on the Mount Rushmore, <laughs> but you certainly uh, uh, sat through more difficult St. Cloud state d- defeats. So I didn't want to speak out of turn. No, you're fine. And and just uh, to, to sum up my college experience at St. Cloud, freshman year was that Ferris State loss. I believe the following year they missed out on the tournament because it was a slightly down year. The year after that was we went – I traveled because I was working for KVSC, which was the student-run station um, at St. Cloud. They lost to Air Force in the opening round. So driving out to, uh, to Fargo to, for that one. My final year, and that was not Motsko now. This was um, the new regime. But the first round loss as the number one team in the country to AIC. Can you tell me what AIC's mascot even is? No, you, you can't. It was, no what's idea. funny is I, uh, they're like the Yellow Jackets or something. The funny thing is I, I did a phone interview earlier in the week with the head coach, whose name escapes me right now, for AIC. And, you know, just kind of after, after the interview, we were kind of just talking because they were just sitting at their hotel and he was already late. And so he was, I think he felt like he had to give me a little more time, but he's just, you know, paraphrasing. They're not, they're not, they weren't getting too much of a chance. And he's like, I know we're not getting too much of a chance. It's just fun to be a part of the tournament. Uh, I'm looking forward for my guys to face it. And he goes, you know what? I'll tell you this though. We know a couple things we've kind of game planned. I think we're going to give them a run for their money. And lo and behold, they upset him. He gave you the scoop. He gave me, and I was like, yeah, I, you know, you, were like, you laughed that. at him. Don't, don't you. BS me, you laughed. I mean, you're, you're like, you got no chance, dude. No, I was like, yeah. I mean, you're you're gonna. No, I understand you, that. Yeah, it'll be it'll that. be a fun game regardless because yeah, they no. they had some decent transfers and whatnot. But wow, it was. Uh, I, I've seen my my four years at St. Cloud, some heartbreak in the in in the NCHC or NCAA tournament rather. All right, sir. We uh, we'll we'll be back. I'm sure within the next few days or so to talk about uh, the Wild and Golden Knights and also where things might be going. Judd's hockey show. He's AJ. I'm Judd. We'll talk to you later.